Okay, so the very last thing here uh, to get the bad ending to completely work, let me just reiterate it so I have it recorded here. Um, the most correct thing here is that we do have a zero here, uh, line eight, native application, dot native application, dot exit zero. Uh, that should then quit the project and return us back to the device. I tested that. The other thing was then, of course, to uh, make sure your instance names are correct and then um, spell everything correctly. I had listener instead of listener. And right here, I've reused the FN Go title, which comes from Scene Help. That's the one that we set up to go back to the title. If you want to go to the title screen, if you want to then go straight ahead to the gate or your uh, you know, level zero, screen zero, then I can use the function FN Go Start. That one's the one that goes directly to the start of the game, which is S0 Gate. So this looks different than before, but think about this. This is pretty powerful. We've always had some sort of event listener, and then right next to it, the definition of that function. In this case, we only have the event listener because we've got that event, we've got that function defined elsewhere. And even though it seems like, well, why does that work? It's where it's not defined. It is defined elsewhere in the code. What happens is when you run the project, when it gets compiled and gets put onto the device, uh, Adobe Animate does scan every single frame and every single object and loads it all into the memory. It doesn't necessarily run everything at once, but it does put everything into memory. So when your project gets compiled, it will check the code in S start, S help, S zero, and put it all into memory. So that's why we don't need to define the function go to title here because it's defined elsewhere. But we can use it here. Other code is more linear. For example, when we are dealing with the the hall and we're dealing with how many times, you know, with the painting, in the painting we are gonna then explicitly play the timeline of the painting. Uh, MC painting right here and then we have the timeline of the painting about uh, keeping track of how many tugs on it and so forth so in that case it is very linear but in other cases it can jump around in different parts of the code because it all loads it into memory so what we'll do is we'll um, work a little bit more on getting the other getting the other uh, the other hallway working a little bit uh, so hallway right is a dead-end hallway hallway left so all of these that uh, we've drawn in white could be things to get clicked on and um, the idea is that the door that looks the hardest to open is the correct one to open everything else people will try to tap on and waste their chances of survival counter whatever we'll call it and therefore so each of these is going to need an instance name each of them is going to need to be turned into a a library object um, each of them is going to need an instance name and then we will need to have a counter that keeps track of how many clicks have happened and the counter will increment every time you click everything and if we reach a threshold, the spikes get us. Or below the threshold, we, uh, we make it. So um, we're going to uh, turn all of these into symbols. So I'll start with the painting on the left here. So select that, F8. This will be MC Hall Left Painting. What is, what is this door at the top usually called when you try to go to the attic? Does it have a specific attic name? Door. Attic door, okay. Uh, so we'll call it MC Hall Left Attic Door. So I'll go with this one. Turn that to a symbol, MC Hall Left Attic Door.
And then the door on the right over here. That's going to be MC Hall left door right. And the one in the center will be very creative and we'll call it MC Hall left door center. So we can go ahead and select the door in the center, and then we can turn that into a symbol as well. MC Hall left, door center. Okay, well all of those have been turned into symbols. All of them then need instance names so we'll have um, I guess we'll do that we'll do them all as bit buttons BTNs so BTN hall left blah 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 you get the idea so name them all exactly as what we called these but prefixing them as BTN instead so start with the painting perhaps select that instance name BTN hall left painting door BTN hall left attic door I guess technically that should have been door attic because it's a type door and specifically attic BTN hall left attic door then BTN for the right door here, BTN uh, hall left, door right. And the door in the center, BTN hall left, door center. So here we have the chance to make all of these animated in some kind of a way, like either the door on the very first scene or the painting. These could shake a little bit, um, maybe you know have them rattle a little bit, all of them, but perhaps to give a hint the center door, if they tap it once, maybe one of the planks will fall off. So right, I see that there are three planks. That'll give the user a hint. I click it, one plank falls off. Okay, I'm getting there. Now what I want to happen, um, it will require three taps to open the central doorway and they will make it. But um, there are also three taps for the spikes to get you. Anywhere that you tap, spikes will start to emerge. Second tap, a little more spikes. Third tap, the spikes get you. So we're going to have two variables we're going to have. One variable keeping track of how many times have you tapped to the center door, and then a variable keeping track of how many total taps have you done to get you to the spikes. So all of them will increment you by one, but also we need to pay attention to the center door, that one being incremented. So we can, let's see, start with our actions here. We'll say variable to keep track of the number 
of tries on the center door. This variable is the important one. Allowing a player to survive. So we're gonna have var something. And then variable to keep track of total tries tapping on anything. This variable leads to certain death if threshold is reached. And that'll be something else. See, we'll call this um, VAR center door tugs. It's a number. It's at the moment equal to zero. And we have maybe we'll say all object tugs, all object tugs, and that's a number. That's also set to zero. You haven't tapped anything. You haven't tugged on anything. You haven't interacted with anything at all in this scene yet. They're all set to zero. If you tap on the center door, it will increment the door tugs by one, and it will increment all object tugs by one. Our center door has an instance of BTN, hall left, door center. dot add event listener we're waiting for a touch event dot touch tap comma fn center door Center door tugs, sure. Did it again. Listener. I'm using my southern accent. Listener. We define then the function for the center door. Event touch. This function, we increment both center door tugs and all object tugs, and includes the possibility to survive. So we say the name of one object or one variable center door tugs plus plus and the other one all object tugs plus plus.
more is going to happen in this function, but let me come back to that to then set up the uh, the event handler and listener, event listener and handlers uh, for the other objects because that'll be a little copy and paste. Um, let's write it longhand first, and then we'll see what I mean about the copy and paste. Let's start with the with that painting in this in this room. So the painting, like everything else besides the center door, if you tap any of those too many times, the spikes are going to get you. So this is going to be btn hall left painting. It's got the event listener. Touch event dot touch tap, comma, fn all object tugs. Event. Touch event. <laughs> well, that's good. Thanks for the help. My brain is still at Comic Con. <laughs> Three o'clock. I would have been at the Marvel booth right here, high fiving Robert Downey Jr. Okay, so um, BTN Hall left painting. Okay. Um, the only thing that this function will do for the moment will be that it's going to only increment the variable that will lead you to the certain death, which is all object tugs. So the only thing we need here is that we will say this function only increments the variable that leads to certain death. The, the conditional statement and the rest of the code that will actually then check what's happening, we will do on the next lecture next time. I just want to set ourselves up to this point. If you save it and run it, you should not get any errors. It won't actually work yet. The left hallway, nothing will quite happen there, but check your errors at this point. Let me check my errors. Running that, no errors. Okay, so. Um, if you go to the left hallway, nothing will really happen yet. Stuff is happening internally. These variables are incrementing and such. Um, but nothing will really happen. Um, I guess if you kind of want some feedback, you can add a trace on this, for example. This is optional, but I'm going to add this. We tapped the center door. little feedback there or we trace we tapped something besides the center door it's just a comment that then is saying that exactly in that if you tap the if you tap the uh, center door we know that that function runs it increments the good counter as well as the bad counter and we're going to have a conditional statement that is going to check if we've reached the threshold for the good counter take us to the good ending or else also check 
did we increase the bad counter? So we're going to do an if-else statement, but slightly different, where we've had if-else, two possibilities. We're going to have three possibilities. We're going to have uh, if, else if, and then, a final, and then a final else. We have three possibilities to test. So we'll do that next time. But at the very least right now, check that you have no errors. If you go to the left hallway, nothing really happens unless you look at the output panel to see those messages. And um, we'll pause at this point. We'll end the lecture at this point if you want to work on your project. Uh, I'm going to go over to Canvas for a moment to show you that the final project requirements are, are there now. We'll talk about it for a moment, and then we'll have time uh, very, very, very briefly. This will be due on Wednesday the 1st, which is a week and a half. Not this Wednesday, but the 1st, Wednesday the 1st, next week. But I got no errors, just to confirm myself here. I play, I open the gate, throw the rock, go to the left hallway. I'm at the left, I tap this, nothing happens. But I got no errors, so that's good. And then looking over at um, Canvas. Your rubric is from the last project. Oops, OK, got to fix that. Fix that in one moment. But if you go look at um, Canvas, If you look at Canvas, we've got a module for this week, as usual. And you will see that we've got the assignment. I've got to fix the rubric, which, is, which shows you at what points you get. I'll fix that in just a moment. But if we look on this, on this module, Slow. But anyway, if you look at this week, uh, we've got all of the requirements in the Adventure Quest project worth 20 points. You've got your setup as you've done before, naming your folder, make sure your dimensions are correct, saving it, changing the various settings of your output publication screen. Um, you'll have to do icons also, like you did on the previous game. Uh, set permissions, etc. Then you've got uh, the, the various requirements. So you're going to need a minimum of, of a title scene, a help scene, good ending, bad ending, and then three different rooms, at least three different scenes that you go through. We've done several. We did the gate, we did the front door, the hallway, the left and the right. That's five scenes already, so you need at least three before you get to you know, the, the bad ending, good ending. Um, we have the different types of code that should work, a basic tap from scene to scene. And I have here, for any, you do code for any of the following types of interactions. You could design your game that it is very simple, simple taps to every single scene, and that's it. That's fine. We've done different types of interactions, a tap to go to a scene, a tap to drag an object with hit detection, We've done taps with things that move but don't do anything. We're working right now, next time, on a conditional statement. If something happens, do the following. So you have to do at least one of those, but most likely you'll be able to do them all. We haven't gotten to music yet. We'll do that next time. Music for the whole game, music for objects. We'll do that next time. You'll have to export it as usual, uh, upload it to Canvas as a zip file, your whole folder, and turn it in in person on my flash drive. It'll be due a week from Wednesday, 20 points, 4 p.m. I've got to update this. This is still saying the grading for the tap frenzy. Sorry about that. But it'll be the same idea. It'll be four or five things that you're going to get points on for a total of 20. 
and uh, it'll be listed what you got your points there. That's what's going to be due then next week. The last day of class is going to be Wednesday the 1st of August. Does anyone know when the main semester starts? The 20th? I hope so. Is it? Yeah. Sounds right, I hope. Yeah, we get a week or two off vacation. That'll be good. Uh, so our final day technically will be Friday, but we don't meet in person, of course. But the last day of class to turn it in will be a Wednesday the 1st, which is going to be a little bit more than a week from today. And we'll, uh, we'll have lab time starting right now. And then uh, next next time, I don't, I don't think we'll take as long for the lecture for next time. Music is not that complicated. And then we will definitely have a full day of lab on the on the thirtieth, and a full day of lab on the on the first. I do also. I would like to do. We didn't do demos for the movie project. I'd still like to do that and give you a chance for extra credit. And we can't really do demos for our games because you want to run them on a real device. Maybe we'll figure out a demo for the two games as well for a little more extra credit. But you know, don't rely on extra credit to pass the class. Do the work to pass the class. And uh, that's what we'll do. So general questions on what's coming up? OK, so we'll have some lab time until 4. If you need any help, I'll put my code on in the network folder and in Canvas, just in case you need to compare. And then we'll keep working.